Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is gonna be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in and today we're gonna to explore all of the updated data from Redfin who updates their housing market information at least once a week. And I think you guys are gonna finally start to see the trends playing out how we've been predicting they're gonna play out in my videos. And the really astonishing thing you guys is, prices continue to go down at historical pace. All right, historical pace, home value has not ever gone down this quickly ever. It has never gone down this quickly. And yet still, you guys, still, people are keeping their heads in the sand from all of this data. Absolutely shocking, shocking stuff. So again, not only do we have the sharpest price decline, we are also following the biggest equity surge in history. And still, you guys, here's the crazy thing. We have historical equity decline without a recession, without unemployment, without foreclosures, without hyper supply. And again, still record breaking equity decline happening right now. Isn't that absolutely astonishing? So what that means is this y'all, and we'll dig into the Redfin article here in a minute. What this means is this, if any of the black swan events happen that we've been predicting, total catastrophe. And, and there's really three things missing from this housing market that we had in 2008, which is unemployment, foreclosures, and hyper supply. Now, obviously supply is shooting up. In just two weeks, we're going to start our inventory dump. And you guys remember, I'm saying a housing market crash is a 15% decline from peak. We've already exceeded that. Never have we exceeded it that quickly, but we've already exceeded a 15% decline from peak in multiple, multiple metro areas. You guys, astonishing, astonishing stuff. The fact that people are refusing to believe this and I get it, you know, investors and realtors, they got to make money. They got to feed their family, but I just think it's completely negligent and irresponsible not to warn people, first time home buyers, clients of the potential, right? The potential of what can go on. And I say that because of this, because of these people, these realtors, these investors, if they're wrong, which I believe they are, they're leading people to potential financial ruin. So I think it's worth a little bit of a pause and say, what if the housing market keeps crashing? What if these trends aren't just seasonal? And you know, the crash bros do have a point, strongest equity decline ever, followed by the biggest bubble ever developed from COVID, from fake money printing. Maybe they have a point there, right? I mean, I'm wondering if they even want to know. And I think that's the problem, you guys. People don't want to know. People right now are scared and desperate and really are going to hold on to anything they can to stay in that normal life cycle, right? Head in the sand. Everything's okay. I'm just going to keep moving forward and working hard. But the problem is with doing that, you when you blind yourself, not only are you blinding yourself, but you're blinding your clients. So anyways, you guys, really, really disturbing stuff I'm starting to see in the real estate industry. I'm starting to see people get a lot more desperate and a lot more bold with cheerleading, quite frankly. But regardless, you guys, you know I'm not a financial advisor. Even if I wanna be, I'm not. Even though my bio is as someone that is about to go and do a field video, I'm leaving my office. I'm gonna do a field video in Houston. I love it. Uh, I'm gonna have a drone pilot, so it's gonna be pretty spicy. I'm probably gonna release that maybe Sunday, maybe Monday, so you guys look out for that. But do me a favor, you guys, for all of the different variations of content I'm doing, please, you guys, like the video, share this video if you can, can, hit notifications and do me a favor, you guys, please shoot me a comment below. Now, other than that, y'all, let's jump into the Redfin article right now. All right, you guys, so here's our article right here titled Housing Market Update, Sale Prices Flat and Demand for Mortgages Falls as Rates Climb. Now, I'm, we're going to go over some really, really interesting things here as far as these trends, you guys. Um, but let's, you know, let's start with just the article. Let me point out a couple things here. Now, I think you guys are going to absolutely love where we're at as far as sale decline, median sales price decline. But let's just start in the beginning part of this article. The median U.S. home sales price was $348,000 during the four weeks ending February 19th, essentially unchanged year over year. That's the first time since at least 2015 when the data for these reports begins. The typical home isn't selling for more than it would have a year earlier. So it's official, you guys. 
We finally are starting to see that year over year decline that I've been warning you guys about. And I said, you know, at the end of February, we would see it. We're only at 0.1% right now. That means if you purchased on average in the last year, you don't have any equity. And not only do you not have any equity, remember, it usually costs 8% to sell your house. Think about it. If you bought in the last year, you're upside down by 8%, typically 8% minus your down payment, right? Which is your own money. So you guys, y'all see the trends here? Why are people keeping their heads in the sand? This is why, because we don't have unemployment and foreclosure and, and hyper supply. But listen, look at the data, look at the trends, look at the prices, right? It's really, really astonishing. Now let's continue. Prices are very close to falling on a year over year basis because serious home buyers are scarce as mortgage rates approach high 6% range, okay? Now, obviously I'm saying as long as rates are in the 5%, we should be okay. But that was also assuming a balanced housing market. When rates went to the low sixes again, people started flooding back into the housing market. Inflation skyrocketed. And again, we're in the situation we're in again now. Now, mortgage purchase applications, this is crazy, you guys, dropped to their lowest since, look at this, lowest level since 1995. And that's just applications. The thing is, is as a loan officer, y'all, Sometimes we have to go through 10 applications just to find one person that's qualified. So mortgage demand right now is absolutely destroyed. It's absolutely destroyed. We're going to continue to see layoffs into this year. It's, it's probably going to be super duper bad. Last week, as stubbornly high inflation caused rates to jump for the second week in a row, pricing many would-be buyers out of the market. Okay, so they're continuing to price would-be buyers out of the market. And you guys, honestly, I, I'm pretty sure we can all agree here. That's actually a good thing because people were jumping off a cliff into financial ruin, right? So they, they had to do it. They had to stop them. Now let's go and look at some leading indicators. So here's our leading indicators for this week, you guys. Let's see what we have. Let's see what they have to say. Now, first of all, the interest rates rose to 6.5%, but... The average on a daily basis was 6.88%. What I can tell you guys is people are getting 7% once again right now. Now, next bullet point, mortgage purchase applications during the week ending February 17th declined 18% in one week. That's how important those interest rates are. If they go under now, if they go over, if they go under six and a half, maybe 6.3, people are going to flood back in, at least while they still have savings in their bank. Now, <clears throat> Next, look at the home buyer demand. So let's look at this next bullet point right here. The seasonally adjusted Redfin home buyer demand index, a measure of requests for home tours and other home buying services from Redfin agents was up 2% from a week earlier and 9% from a month earlier, but was down 25% from a year earlier. So there is some optimism uh, from Redfin there, but again, they're down you know, big time year over year. Now, Google searches were down 23%. Okay, so Google searches, online searches down 23% from a year earlier, but up 18% from November. Now, touring activity, okay, touring activity was up 14.1% from the start of the year compared to 18% increase this time last year. So obviously, home buying touring is down. Let's keep going, you guys. Let's go to some really cool points here. I love this part. Now, the median home price sold for $348,000 essentially flat from a year earlier. That means again, if you bought, we have data now, all right? Show this data to your realtor friends or any channels you're watching with realtors that are throwing up cheerleading, throwing up over optimism, throwing up negligence. Show them this information and, and show them also the metro areas with year over year price decline, but let's move on. All right, show you guys this next part right here. Let me zoom in a little bit on this because I really want us to take a look at this. I believe we're at, what is it, 44% now? So the median sales price fell in 21, all right? So give this to the realtors that are not listening in Phoenix. Give them to the, you know, to the realtors not listening in Las Vegas. Give them to the realtors that are not listening in California. Because here's what this says. Median sales price fell in 21 of the 50 most populous U.S. metro areas with the biggest drops in Oakland, California. Number two is now Austin at 9.5%. So in one year, Austin from peak to right now has lost a lot, you guys, almost 20%, I believe, because remember, they lost all of the run-up in 2022. So Austin taking absolute beating, followed by Sacramento and Phoenix. Phoenix is number four. 
Wake Up Realtors in Phoenix, number four, and then San Jose again. Look at all of the price declines in California. So when I, you know, hear these California realtors, you know, overly optimistic, everything's fine. Just keep buying. I mean, y'all, we're just in the second inning. And they're, and they're still marching people off a cliff. And we have the data on our sites. And we don't even have, like I said, unemployment, foreclosures, and hypersupply. This is bonkers, you guys. But price increased the most in Columbus, Milwaukee, West Palm, Miami, and Indianapolis. Now, it's important to note as well, those aren't month-over-month -month increases. That's year-over-year. -year. So that's being chiseled into, obviously, you guys. But now let's go to some visualization of some data. And let's really take a look at the trends of these graphs. Let's start right here, okay? This is what I've been really watching, you guys. Median sales price. Now, I know it's not average. It is median. There's disadvantages of using both. But look at... Let me zoom in here. Look at how close we are. The red line is last year. The orange line is this year. Once this orange line, okay, it's right here right now. Once this orange line, okay, goes under that red line, everyone's narrative that is pushing people to just buy is done. Now, obviously, they're going to be able to manipulate people and people are still going to buy into what they're saying because unfortunately, people are desperate right now. And a lot of people let other people do the thinking for them. But that's okay. Just look at the data, you guys. We are, you know, you know, just look at the data, you guys. More than likely next week, we're finally going to have our year-over-year -year price decline, okay? And just in time because it's February 25th right now, I said wait to the end of February. We would have our year-over-year -year price decline. Look at how close we are. I mean, isn't that astonishing, you guys? I mean, follow the data, right? If we're not going to have year-over-year -year price decline, we got to go and match that trajectory of that red line. So let me show you guys what some people, you know, what their narrative is. Basically, some people that have led people to financial ruin are basically saying that home value is just going to stay flat like this. OK, it's just going to stay flat like this. It's not really going to go down. It's just going to stay flat. All right. So that's one line of thinking. Now, the interesting thing is, is once we get, you know, towards June right here. Now, once we get there, we're going to have the greatest year over year declines. And that's in June. That's when we're going to be right here. OK, so that's when probably the fear is going to start hitting, you know, drastically is when we hit, you know, when we match the peak, when we're, you know, in 2023, when we're in where it peaked last year. So we're going to have massive, massive price declines showing once we get there. But again, you guys, this is what people are saying. So their point is, is just buy right now because home prices aren't going to go down. But the thing is, guys, when we start getting more and more and more inventory, or if any black swan event happens, unemployment goes up, supply goes up, foreclosures go up, any of that happens, then obviously, more than likely, the prices are going to actually go down and not stay balanced. So then let me show you what I believe is going to happen. Okay, let me let me start over here. Now, this is what I believe is going to happen. I think we're actually not going to go balanced. I think we're going to go maybe down. Maybe at the peak, we'll, we'll kind of go up a little bit like this, matching 2021, you know, maybe like this going under a little bit. But once the winter hits, you know, once the fall and winter hits, I suspect it's going to go down like this, hopefully under 2021 value. So that's kind of what I foresee, you guys. I don't know for sure if that's going to happen. I know that we're on pace for a historic flash crash in home prices right now. Let's move on to the next chart. Now, here's median asking price. Now, median asking price is kind of so far matching last year. Um, but the reality is, is this data is tainted because it's not taking into consideration the massive amounts of buying incentives right now. The massive amount of buying incentives right now, it's kind of clouding the data. Because remember, last year, instead of buying incentives, we had bidding war. And your buying incentive was going over appraisal value and doing an appraisal gap. <laughs> you guys see my point? So it's all fake. It's all coming to an end, right? <laughs> Just my opinion. I'm sorry, you guys. I know some people just want the data. Let's move on to the next chart. And now here's the thing right here. And this is even worse than last year. So some of the things that we're experiencing in our housing market right now are actually worse than it was in 2008. And here's one of the things, you guys, which is the unaffordability, which is the mortgage payments. Look at how high mortgage payments are right now as compared to 2022. Look at that massive skyrocket upward in mortgage payments. That's a rug pull right there and way more than 2021 right here and way more than 2020. So we should probably be, I don't know, maybe right there, maybe an $1,800 mortgage payment and things will be balanced again. 
right? That's what I believe. Let's move on to the next chart. Now, this is basically showing us we're about to get a massive inventory dump. We get normally an inventory dump for spring and summer. So I believe that this line is maybe won't go up as sharply, you guys, because there's way less incentives to sell right now, but it's probably going to go up pretty sharply. This is what I think it's going to do. Maybe not as sharply, but pretty sharply. And then, you know, seasonal, you know, a little bit of decline. I don't think we're going to have a decline necessarily like we did the other year. So it's probably going to be something like this. Okay. That's what I believe the trajectory of new listings is going to be. We'll see that here in due time. So, you know, it's starting to look like 2024 is going to be a really good year to buy real estate. And there's going to be opportunities, in my opinion, to purchase in 2023. But quite frankly, I'm putting my purchasing on hold because there's just too much dust in the air. It's just not time yet. Now take a look at the inventory, you guys. I love watching this. And this is why the, you know, the Fed had to raise interest rates. Normal people, are, I believe, are staying out of the market. They realize that homes are overpriced. They realize the Federal Reserve is doing quantitative tightening. They realize they want the, you know, the, that the housing market is about to be reset. But nevertheless, you guys, we have a lot more inventory than we did for the last two years as far as months of supply, not active units. Okay, people get that confused all the time. I'm not talking active units. I have a chart for that. I'm going over this Redfin chart. And this is months of supply, all right? Now, normally we need six months for it to be considered a buyer's market. Right now we have 3.8 months, which is way higher than last year. Last year we were way down here. 2021, we were way down here. So all of these people are saying we still have record low inventory. Well, that's kind of true. We do have historical low unit amount, but demand is broken. Demand's broken. We don't need as much inventory as indicated in the months of supply available on the market. Now, I believe what's going to happen, you guys, is maybe something like this. I'm like, oh, my God, the interest rates are high. Prices are high. Let's go. So I think that's going to start going up, to be honest with you. I'm hoping it's going to go up you know, pretty substantially, actually, maybe even sharper than this. I am so sorry, you guys. It's really hard to draw on this. But I think the months of supply are actually going to go up. You know, it's, It may be a roller coaster ride, but it's going to go up. In my opinion, let's move on to the next. Chart. All right, so here's one of the leading indicators for interest rate changes. So I just want to let you guys know in this data, it's not really showing the 7% rates yet. So this data is not even showing the 7% rates that we actually have right now. So once those 7% interest rates start, you know, digging into this data as spring and summer inventory hit, we're going to start saying the naked truth, if you will. Uh, but look at this, you guys, it kind of plateaued here. This is the listings with price cuts. Obviously, it went straight up. And then, oh, my gosh, all these people ran back into the market because of the fear of missing out. It was nothing fundamental. It was, it was mostly fear of missing out. Obviously, there's a, there's a percentage of buyers. Uh, you know, it might have made sense for various reasons. I'll acknowledge that. But predominantly, you guys, people ran back in, listings with price cuts started going down, and then they raised interest rates and it started balancing out again. So this is what we're going to see moving forward. We're going to start seeing that shoot up again. Okay, that's what I believe. That's going to start shooting up again because people are going to have to lower their prices in order to sell again, especially as we go into the extreme inventory dump months in a couple weeks. All right, now here is what is broken. This is the Redfin Home Buying Demand Index. It's down, demand is broken. Demand is down 25% year over year. Super important to understand that. Demand is broken. Demand is broken from unaffordability. And we can see though, uh, here's where we're at right now. We're at 25% under year over year. So this is where we're at right now. And demand, even though people came running back into the market, it was still well under 2021 and it was still well under 2022. So even with all the pandemic, oh my God, everyone's running back in. It's still well under the last two years, although it is over 2020. Okay, y'all see that? But that was right before the collapse as well. That was right before lockdowns, it looks like right here. So very, very cool stuff, you guys. Very interesting. Let's keep our eyes on these trends. So here's what I'm saying, you guys. Let this data, let the stuff that we just went over help you decide what's best for you as far as buying a house. Now, if you're a first-time home buyer, understand that running out and buying you know, right outside of the bubble can lead to financial distress. It can lead you to be trapped in your house. And I understand the argument, you guys, as long as you can make it the you know 10 years, everything's going to be fine. But that's assuming your life doesn't change. That's assuming your life stays perfect. So if you think that this is going to happen fast, understand, you guys, it is happening fast. It's actually happening at historic speeds. 
but it takes time, all right? We had almost a 40% run up in equity in two years. We have a massive decline in equity right now. It's, it is unevenly dispersed, but nevertheless, it is happening and we have the data. So my point is, is don't run out and buy real estate right now. Hold on if you can. As you're waiting, remember the three main things as far as qualifying for a loan for a house, credit income assets. Increase your credit, get out of consumer debt, save more money, make more money. And I know it's hard, but life is hard, you guys. You just have to do it. I believe the harder that we work right now, the more reward we're going to get right around the corner, all right? And also remember this. I know it gets frustrating. I know we just want the housing market to crash right now. We want to find a deal of our lifetime. Believe me, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I'm renting right now. But the thing is, guys, just in the meantime, if you're getting impatient, if you're kind of getting frustrated, take a break, go on vacation, go on a walk, love your family, love yourself, love your life, become an expert in your market, but don't freak out. If you freak out, that's what the realtors are banking on. They want you to freak out so that their job becomes easy. They want you to disregard what I just went over with you today. So if you can just access the link, you don't have to agree with everything I'm saying, access that link, make your own decision up. This is just my opinion. Now, other than that, guys, I really hope you guys got value insights and perspectives today. And if you're out there investing in real estate, you know, I wish you luck and I hope you win.